Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's your number one Pat Asian coming to you again with another one of these intriguing FIFA 17 experiments. And since the last Premier League draft video did so well, I went ahead and asked you guys, would you guys enjoy to see another draft? But this time, if it incorporated all players in the world, no age restrictions. Now, if you don't know what kind of a Premier League draft is or a fantasy draft is, go ahead, click on the I think is over here. That will pull out uh, the first video in which we did a Premier League draft with all players that were under, I think, the age of 23. Now, the rules for this draft is in a hypothetical world, uh, let's say that all other leagues besides the English Premier League were eliminated and thus all that talent was out there and freely available to go ahead and be signed uh, by Premier League teams. But to create parity like in the American League, such as the NFL, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have the teams at the bottom of the table, being the teams that are the lowest in the Premier League table, be able to go ahead and pick first. Currently recording this on May 12th of 2018, and as it starts right now, that would mean that Stoke City has the first overall pick, then West Rom would pick, and then Swansea would pick all the way, all through 20 teams, all the way to Man City. And once Man City gets the 20 pick, it would reset and go all the way back down to Stoke would again have another pick. Now we're only gonna be doing two rounds because the last video was pretty hefty and I also would like to do something else today. And I think the only other rule and stipulation is uh, if the players are already on a team in the Premier League, you can't draft them. So, you know, like Stoke can't draft Mohamed Salah and whatnot. But beyond that, everyone else is fair game. Doesn't matter the age, doesn't matter what country. They just have to be outside of the Premier League. If this concept gets your nipples all tingly, go ahead and smush your nipples into the like button. Subscribe for more weird FIFA 18 oddball content. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Stoke is now on the clock with the first overall pick in the 2000 and 18 Premier League Fantasy Draft. Stoke City have a pretty horrendous team. They sit currently at the bottom of the Premier League table, so pretty much anyone can help, but come on. This is the first overall pick. It only boils down to two players, and you know who the two are. It is going to be either Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo. You guys can go ahead, vote up in the I think it's right here. If you were Stoke and you had the first pick overall of any player outside of the Premier League, which player are you going? Is it going to be Messi or is it going to be Cristiano Ronaldo? Or you can kind of argue Neymar because he is younger and youth does kind of play into a factor. So for longevity's sake, you might be able to argue Neymar. But for this one, I think this is coming from a Ronaldo fanboy because I am a Manchester United fan. I am, I'm going to go Messi. I got to give it to him, man. I know I'm instantly going to lose about half of the audience right here, but... And it's hard to go wrong with either one of them because Cristiano Ronaldo is tried and tested in the Premier League. I think they're both 94 rated currently in the game. I think the only thing that I that, that swung me is one, I mean, he's incredible. And secondly, he's slightly younger at the age of 30. And with that, West Brom Albion is on the clock. West Brom also equally crappy this season and they have a glaring weakness over at this left mid position. I think there are two players that are in contention right here. It's Cristiano Ronaldo and Neymar. You can make the argument for Neymar here because he is younger. He's going to give you more stability. He's going to give you more years. But it's the second pick overall. You're, you're going Ronaldo. <laughs> if I didn't go Ronaldo with the second overall pick and I picked Messi first, there would be like over like 2,000 dislikes on this video. And with that, Swansea is now on the clock. Now, this third overall pick could have been interesting if we took all the players in the world, including the Premier League, because... Who is currently the third best player in the world? You guys can go ahead and vote up in the I thingies again. Would it be Mohamed Salah? Would it be Neymar? I think those are the two contending figures. But since Harry Kane and Mohamed Salah are already on teams in the Premier League, we can't choose them. I think it's it's going to be another easy one. We're going to go ahead and put uh, Neymar in on the Swansea team. So it went Messi, Ronaldo, Neymar. I don't think there's going to be too many disputes on that. And with that, Southampton is on the clock. Southampton, historically a great team at producing, you know, youth talents, but it, it just has not been working out for them this year. They got a lot of holes. They're starting the 68 guy at center back. Uh, they got a 76 as their goalkeeper. But I think the most pressing issue for Southampton this past season has been finding a consistent goal score. They got to lead the line, and we're going to go with, I would say, probably the fourth best player on the board, and that is Antoine Griezmann. I'm going to go ahead, slot in there up top. He can also play out on the wings if they really want him to, but it's a pretty solid, pretty solid player. And with that, Huddersfield is now on the clock. I think Huddersfield actually has the lowest overall. It's either them or Brighton who actually have the lowest overall in FIFA right now uh, for the Premier League. 
And as you can see, their their team, I mean, it's they, they just came up for the championship. So we go a number of directions, but I think what's most important, especially for these teams with low overalls, is to have just a, a lockdown keeper. And there's one very much available on the board. He's arguably the best keeper in the world. My personal opinion is David De Gea, but uh, with the fifth overall pick, we're gonna see the first keeper taken off the board, and that is Manuel Neuer. There are a million other great players still on the board, uber talented players, but for this team, uh, and their main goal being survival, I think Neuer is gonna give them the best value at this pick. And with that, West Ham is now on the clock. West Ham was looking a little bit shaky, especially at the start of the season, but they have righted the ship and they want to continue going in that direction. Currently, they have Arnautovic up top, but he could also play at either one of the uh, winger positions. Mark Noble is getting up there in age, so I did think about getting a midfielder for a second, but I think what they're gonna do is they're gonna move Arnautovic out onto that left side. They're gonna move Jao Mario into the midfield, and then they're gonna take the best overall player uh, currently still available, and that is at the striker position, a man who can bag them a lot of goals, and that is Robert Lewandowski. I flirted with Lewandowski going to Southampton. The only reason why I took Griezmann over Lewandowski was because of the age factor. Lewandowski is already 28. Uh, he's getting a little bit up there while um, Antoine Griezmann is 26. He can offer him a couple more years and Southampton are kind of more in the mold of going with younger, high talented players. That and Griezmann kind of fit more of the style of play of Southampton and much the same way as Lewandowski fits the uh, play style of West Ham. He is going to be a literal hammer for the hammers. And with that, Brighton is now on the board. All right, I take it back. I think they're the least talented of all the teams that are in the Premier League. And it's basically the same mentality. I, I think strengthening their defense is their best bet. Um, Ryan's, Ryan's decent though. I think he has the potential over 80, so we're gonna hold on to him for now. And we're going to take the best uh, overall center back that is available, and that is Sergio Ramos is gonna go off the board. Oh, that Crystal Palace is now. Now, there are a couple glaring weaknesses in this Crystal Palace team. Specifically, they have MacArthur as a right mid over here, and he has 60, 60 pace. So yeah, that's a thing. Also, Ward is only uh, 74 rated, and the most glaring weakness is Hennessy. But I think to go ahead and take Oblak here, while there's still so many great players on the board, and with Crystal Palace needing a lot of other things, I think it's I think it's too much of a reach. I think they could probably get a decent end keeper in the second round. So I'm gonna hold off on Oblak. And what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna move Towson back out onto the right side. And then we're gonna go ahead and get a strike partner for Wilfred Saha, who has had a phenomenal season this year. And that is going to be the one, the only Paulo Dybala. And with that, Newcastle is known. Newcastle have had a rejuvenated season under Rafa Benitez back in the Prem. And they're going to go for a former uh, Rafa Benitez player who he had, I believe, over at Real Madrid. They're going to take the first midfielder off of the board to replace a lowly rated 74 uh, Diame in the midfield. Now it's going to be Tony Cruz of Real Madrid. 90 overall, he's going to be Boston alongside John Joe Shelby. There could have been other places that he could have gone, but I think to get the best midfielder uh, possible was pretty solid. And with that, Leicester is now on the play. Leicester, after that fantastic miracle season in which they captured the Premier League, have definitely uh, taken a couple steps back, especially losing N'Golo Conte. They haven't really been able to replace him, as well as their defense, man. They've just been letting in too many goals. So with that, and the 12th overall pick, Leicester is going to go ahead and select Chiellini of Juventus. He's good, he's strong, he can organize the defense. Uh, Maguire can learn from him. I think it's a great pick. He could be the future captain of the team. And with that, Everton is now on the clock. The biggest issue early on in the season was finding a replacement for Romelu Lukaku, and that was kind of the downfall of Everton this season. So what they're going to do is they're going to go ahead and solve that issue by picking up someone who's actually higher rated than Romelu Lukaku at the moment, and that is the big fatty himself, Gonzalo Higuain. And now Burnley, the overperformers of the season, are now on the clock. Burnley fans must be over the moon with uh, their current position in the Premier League in real life, but if this was the case, I feel like they probably would have been like, hey, we should have tanked so that we could get more talent on the team. Because if you look around it, it's not... It, it, it's kind of weird that they're this high up on the table. But the glaring weakness in the starting roster is this man right here. Westwood is only 74 rated in the midfield and there is a magnificent midfielder still available. Personally, my favorite midfielder in the world right now, and that is Luka Modric. Only one point less than Tony Cruz. He's a little bit more mobile and I think he kind of probably fits more what Burnley want anyway. 
14th pick overall to go ahead and snatch up Luka Modric. It is an absolute steal, and Burnley keep on winning. And with that, Arsenal is now on the clock. Now, Arsenal is an enigma because they're one of the most talented rosters in the league. As you can see, almost everyone on here is uh, 80 rated or above. So my philosophy when drafting for Arsenal became a lot more specific. Instead of trying to strengthen their weaknesses, I want to accentuate their strengths. With the likes of Ozil, Mkhitaryan, Aubameyang, Wilshere, you got a lot of great footballing minds there, a lot of football intelligence, and I want to take that to the next level by going ahead and uh, adding someone into the midfield. So with the 15th pick overall and one pick after Luka Modric went, we're going to go ahead and add Thiago to this Arsenal roster. One of the best all-round midfielders in the world. He's going to be the engine that makes this Arsenal machine tick. He's going to provide creativity. Can you imagine him being on the same pitch along with Mesut Ozil? It is going to be just football pornography. And with that, Chelsea is now on the clock. Chelsea had the same big issue that Everton had this season. They lost their main big man striker and they were never able to replace him or recover from it. They've tried a lot of people in there, you know, like some Michi Batshuayi, uh, Olivier Giroud, they signed Alvaro Morata. None of them have been able to deliver in the goods the same way that Diego Costa did uh, in the previous season. Would have been easy to actually go ahead and sign Diego Costa in right now. That actually made a lot of sense, but there is a higher rated striker available who can play kind of that target man position, and that is going to be Edison Cavani. A lot of people talk a lot of shit about Edison Cavani, but he is a very, very good high-end world-class striker. And with that, the darlings of the Champions League, Liverpool, are now in the clock. Liverpool, you're not going to touch the front three. It's arguably the best front three in football currently right now. Midfield, definitely somewhere we can kind of look into. You know, Wijnaldo, Milner, and Hendo don't exactly scream out world-class. The back line is interesting. I actually really like Trent Alexander-Arnold. And especially, I love Robertson as a good uh, fullback prospect. Van Dijk is very solid. Lovren, eh. But we all know where the main weakness in this Liverpool team is the weak link that might cost them in the Champions League final. That is that man right here. It's either him or it's Mignolet. Neither one of them are all that convincing, if I'm going to be honest. So this is pretty much a, a no-brainer. Only one keeper has been taken off the board. That was Noor. They're going to sell for second place, and it is not that hard of a second. It is going to be Jan Oblak who is 89 rated overall. And with that, Tottenham Hotspur is now on the top. In this one, I mean, just sometimes fate falls into the right place. Um, we're gonna move Deli Alley back into the midfield here. We're gonna move Dyer out onto the right side, move Ericsson into his more natural cam position. I think the only weakness in this side is the right mid, and there is one right mid who is still available in the player pool and as a former Tottenham player, you guys already knew who was going to be. They're going to bring back Gareth Bale. He's going to reunite at Tottenham, and I'm pretty sure the Tottenham fans that are watching this are over the moon. It's been a little bit injury prone, but when he is healthy and he's in there, he's a tornado force. And come on, just look at this roster, man. Bale, Harry Kane up front, Erickson behind him, and then Hungman's son over on the left. Get out of here. And with that, second place Manchester United and Jose Mourinho are now in the block. Manchester United has spent something like half a billion dollars in attacking players and midfielders between like Pablo Lukaku and Sanchez. I don't think they're going to be touching any one of these front six over here. So it's going to be in the back line. It's I thought about picking up a, a center back right here, but left back has been a constant issue ever since Jose Mourinho uh, came into Manchester United. He doesn't seem to really like Luke Shaw. Um, he's converted Ashley Young from a winger into a left back, who's actually been pretty fantastic, but the best left back in the world is still available. It's a player that he's coached before. He's an absolute fantastic player, and that, of course, is Marcelo of Real Madrid. It just makes too much sense. He would solidify that back line. He's great going forward. He's got a monster cross to go ahead and put it onto the noggin of Romelu Lukaku. Jose Mourinho finally solidifies a problem area of this team. Now they just gotta pray for a decent end, you know, center back to go ahead and make their way back to them in round two. And with that, the champions of the Premier League this season, Pep Guardiola and Manchester City, are now on the clock. This Manchester City roster should be illegal. They spent so much money, and it's been money well spent, arguably. Uh, all their players have been fantastic, and Pep Guardiola, hats off to him, has done very well in developing the talent that he has signed as a talent that was already there at Manchester City. They deserve to win the league. There's only one glaring positional weakness in this side, and you know, it's Fabian Delph who's traditionally a center mid. He did go ahead and sign Mendy, but 
I think this is a kind of a, another no-brainer to go ahead and sure up that position. He's been one of the best left backs in the world. I believe he had him over at his time at Barcelona, an ex-Barcelona player, and that is going to be Jordi Alba. Thus goes ahead and ends round one of the 2018 Fantasy Draft. Now we go ahead and restart it all over in round two, beginning with Stoke City. But I'm going to go pee and drink a little bit of water because I've been talking for half an hour straight. All right, we're back, and Stoke is now on the clock with the first pick of the second round. I don't think it's going to surprise too many people that Stoke City went ahead and took Lionel Messi with the first overall pick in the inaugural fantasy draft, but they are going to surprise some people with the first pick in the second round, and they're going to go ahead and take the best youngster in the world right now, and that is Kalyan Mbappe. I know, this is... This is risky, hyper risky, because it's a luxury pick. But the reason why I took it right here is you got one for the now, Lionel Messi, the GOAT. He's gonna be playing for you for at least probably like three or four more years. And in that time, you can go ahead and develop alongside him, arguably the next great young player. And it's not like he's shabby either. He's already 84 rated overall. He's got a potential of like 92, 95 or something crazy like that. And the my reasoning behind that is they already have a pretty good winger out on Shakiri. Their back line is actually rather solid besides their left back position. But Martin Zindi and Shawcross are okay. And Jackie Butts is a very good young talented keeper. I mean Stoke fans I don't think will complain. If they had Messi and Mbappe on their team I think they'd be fine. And with that, West Brom is on the call. For the second overall pick, uh, West Brom and Albion went ahead and selected Cristiano Ronaldo. And with their second pick, they're going to go and opt for the midfield. I think the issue right here is they're playing Rodriguez, who's traditionally a winger slash striker in the cam position. So we're going to go for the best cam available and arguably the best player that is still available on the board. And that is James Rodriguez. He's been good when healthy over at Real Madrid, but he's been fantastic uh, for Bayern Munich this past season. I think if he continue that form and hopefully, you know, continues into the World Cup and all that, this is going to be a scintillating duo. Uh, their final two picks are Cristiano Ronaldo and James Rodriguez, not too shabby for West Brom. And that's Swansea are not a fan. Swansea took Neymar with the third overall pick, and with this next pick, they're going to go a little bit sexier. Uh, they have AU up top, but they're going to upgrade massively by selecting Mr. Icardi, 87 rated overall from Inter Milan. He's been a goal machine. He's been Mr. Consistent season in, season out. He is just absolutely bagging them in. I think he's big enough. He's strong enough. He's smart enough for uh, the Premier League and combining him alongside Neymar. I think they're going to be bagging a lot of goals over at Swansea. And with that, Southampton is now on the call. Southampton went ahead and selected Antoine Griezmann ahead of Robert Lewandowski in round one, primarily because I feel like they really value youth. And that is the same route of thinking that I'm going to go in with in uh, round number two. Their back line is not the strongest and their keeper is, is not all that great. So I think the best mode of thinking is to get a high-end keeper. Buffon is still available, but he is pretty much ancient. So I think they're going to go once again in the youth route and they're going to pick the highest rated youngster at that position and that is John Luigi Donnarumma of AC Milan. He's going to be the next Buffon. He's already fantastic. He's six foot five and with his wingspan he might as well look like he's seven foot two. And with that Huddersfield is now on the clock. Huddersfield will be first team to go ahead take a keeper and a very good keeper. They took Manuel Noir with the fifth overall pick in the first round. And they have a lot of holes to fill, you know, a, a lot of offensive positions. I thought about Iron Robin over here on the right side. But I, I, I still think that their best bet to avoid relegation is to go ahead and keep clean sheets. You know, just battle out and be really tough defensively. And there's an amazing uh, center back still available on the board. So I think uh, with the fifth pick in the second round, they're going to go ahead and pick up Jerome Boateng. And with that, West Ham is now on the clock. West Ham arguably got a seal in round one when they went ahead and swooped on Robin Lewandowski, and he just fits in this round. Like, I can already see him playing in a West Ham jersey. <laughs> I think that embodiment is going to carry on to the player that they go ahead and select in the second round. They're going to upgrade in the defensive back line. Crestwell, goodbye, and they're going to go ahead and add a Diego Godin of Atletico Madrid. A tough player, a very smart player, a grizzled veteran. I think the additions of him and Robert Lewandowski is one of the better pairings 
uh, in this entire draft. And with that, Brighton is now on the clock. Brighton with their first overall pick took the highest rated center back in the game and that is Sergio Ramos. They got a decent end keeper. So I think with their second round pick, they got to go offense. So they're going to take the best striker overall because that is the weakest point on their squad right now. They got a 74 rated uh, Glenn Murray up top. And they're going to go ahead and introduce the Belgian Dries Mertens. He's been lighting it up for the past couple of seasons uh, over in Serie A. Hopefully, he can light up the Premier League. And with that, Watford is now on the clock. Watford went ahead and took a little bit of a risk by picking up Luis Suarez in the first round to go ahead and help out with their goal contributions. And they're going to even it out by taking uh, defense in the second round. Most glaring weakness is right here, 74 rated uh, Mariapa. They're going to upgrade at that position by taking Tiago Silva of PSG. And with that, Bournemouth is now in the final. Bournemouth used their first pick to go ahead and solidify their back line by taking Matt Hummels of Bayern Munich. So I think the clear spot that needs to be upgraded is the Surman guy over here in the center mid position. He's only a 76 over rated. I did consider the best midfielder who was available, and that is uh, Marco Verratti of PSG in this position. Issue is, when you take a look at Cook though, that midfield would be way too tiny. Cook is five foot nine, and Marco Verratti is like five foot five or something. They would get destroyed in the Premier League. So I did go for another midfielder. I went for someone a little bit taller, a little bit more wilier, a little bit stronger, has a bit more presence, and that of course, is a Sergio Busquets. He's getting up there in age, I know, but he's had a fantastic resurgent season. He's arguably one of the most intelligent defensive midfielders ever to play the position. And if you're born with a team that doesn't have too much talent, once again, I think having extremely smart defensive minded players like a Sergio Busquets or a Mark, uh, Matt Hummels is gonna take them a lot further than just adding a flashy striker or winger. So with that, Crystal Palace is now on the play. Crystal Palace took Paulo Dybala in the first round to pair with Wilfred Saha to create one of probably the most entertaining um, hypothetical striker duos that we could see in the prem. So they're pretty set going forward. We got now to go ahead and take a look at the defense and the most glaring weakness is right here. 73 overall, Hennessy. They're still an amazing and all-time great keeper still available and that is John Luigi. Buffon. I mean, Crystal Palace fans have to be pretty ecstatic. They got Paulo Dybala and Gianluigi Buffon. I think two players that were nominated for, uh, what was it, like team of the year. Now that Newcastle is now on the clock. Newcastle could have gone in a number of positions, especially up front. They're not the highest rate, but a lot of these players are actually, you know, they got decent end potential. Richie, Perez, Gale, uh, Kennedy all I think have potentials over 80 even their back line like Lascelles is over 80 uh, Yedlin's well over 80 so I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade them we're gonna have a mini run on keepers right now we're after Buffon's got taken Handanovic is still available on the board we're gonna go ahead and slot him in and with that Lester is going to play Lester with the first pick took Chile to go ahead and pair alongside their good young promising uh, center back in Maguire so the back line is pretty solidified. And I think with their second pick, they're going to go ahead and move to try to fill the void that losing N'Golo Conte uh, has brought upon this team. We've seen this season that Vardy and Mares are as deadly as ever. And I think if they can find the replacement and we're gonna take out Ebora right here, and we're gonna place in Casemiro of Real Madrid. He's not exactly the same type of player as an N'Golo Conte, but he's an athletic guy. He's a strong guy. He's a ball winner in that midfield. You pair him alongside in Diddy. And if they can go ahead, break up play, win that ball and spray them toward Mares or get it over to Vardy on the counterattack, maybe they rekindled the magic of, um, you know, a couple of seasons ago. And with that, Everton is now on the clock. Everton in the first round, I think, uh, had a solid pick of going ahead and replacing Romelu Lukaku with Gonzalo Higuain. Their back line is excellent. It's a very talented back line, and Pickford's very talented as well. I did consider, you know, dipping into the midfield, but I think the midfield is just good enough. I think they need a little bit more pizzazz. We're going to move Balassi out onto the right side. We're going to move Walcott onto the bench, and we're going to reintroduce a former Premier League player into the side. It's going to be weird, but I think he's the best overall attacking player still available. He fits a role of need uh, in this Everton side, and that is going to be Philip Coutinho. I know, I know, it's going to be strange uh, for him to go from Liverpool over to Everton, but hey, in a draft, you don't get to decide where to go. They need a, a left-sided player. He's fantastic. He's been fantastic in the Premier League. I think this is a very solid pick. They're going to be scoring a lot more goals next season. And with that, Burnley is now on the 
Burnley with the first pick took Luka Modric to solidify their midfield. Uh, their back line is quite solid and Pope actually got team of the season for the Premier League. So I think they're good back there. So we're going to focus on adding a little bit more firepower to the side. And they're going to go ahead and grab a guy who's been lighting it up this season. I think he's like the third or the fourth highest goal scorer uh, this year in all the major European uh, leagues. And that is Immobile. Yes, as of recording this, he has scored 41 goals in all uh, competitions this season. And with that, Arsenal are now in the Arsenal in round one went ahead and picked up Thiago because my philosophy is for Arsenal to get back to the level that they, they once were. They have to go ahead and accentuate the strengths that make them Arsenal. You know, beautiful football, intricate passing, intelligent football, unlocking defenses at will with creativity. So with their second pick in the second round, I'm going all in with Arsenal. I'm People are going to think I'm crazy. But I'm taking out Wilshire and I'm adding in Isco. That's right. I said screw it to the back line. I said screw it to Petr Cech. I think Xhaka's good enough. He's had a pretty solid season. But just imagine this team playing for Arsenal. Ozil, Thiago, and Isco all on the same team. All on the same pitch. Each one of them already a savant at unlocking defenses. You combine all three of them, how are you gonna stop this? Like, don't tell me you wouldn't be afraid if you saw this lineup right here, come on. Let me know when the I thing is right here. Did I make good picks to Arsenal, or do you think this is a sexy team, or do you think this is really stupid? <laughs> I mean, that Chelsea is now on the board. Thought about upgrading uh, Victor Moses over here, but I think he he's good enough, and Golo Conte uh, is very, very solid. So the only position that we could really, really look to upgrade is Fabregas, who's getting up there in age, but the best player available that's still on the board happens to be a midfielder as well, so we're gonna upgrade from Fabregas to go ahead and bring in Bronte. I know this is an extremely short midfield. <laughs> N'Golo Conte is 5'6", and Marco Verratti is 5'5". Five five. But Verratti is just that good. You gotta think that a player who's been highly scouted, highly coveted by Barcelona is a pretty intelligent player. And maybe you don't play two-man midfield with him and Conte. Maybe you play him along, you know, three-man midfield with maybe N'Golo Conte and uh, Bakayoko. I'm not super excited about this pick, but it, he's the best player available on the board. And with that, Liverpool is now on the clock. I think Liverpool hit a slam dunk in a position of need in round one, and that was upgrading from Karius. Uh, all the way up to an 89 rated Jan Oblak. And they're not going to take the best player available, but the player they are going to take is just fits them like a glove. And they're going to upgrade from Henderson in the midfield and pick up Arturo Vidal. I mean, come on, this is a, a perfect pick in the second round for Liverpool right here. They get a player who's a little bit older, but fantastic motor, a ball winner, actually a little bit creative going forward an intelligent player you had Vidal in that CDM position and you had Oblak in the keeper position this is a team that can beat anyone in the world and with that Spurs is now on the clock. Tottenham had a dream pick in the first round they are reunited with their uh, prodigal son in Gareth Bale and with their second pick I think they're going to upgrade at a position of need and is the first right back that is taken in this draft and they're going to go ahead and pick up Joshua Kimmich or is it Yimich? He's got high end potential he's actually scored a number of goals this season uh, coming from the right back position especially in Champions League arguably the best right back in the world right now even at that young age and this young talented Tottenham team just gets younger and more talented. And with that, second place Manchester United are now on the board. Manchester United shirt up the left back position in picking up Marcelo in the first round. I talked about it then. I think the most logical pick that you go here is to find a partner to pair alongside Eric Bai for the future. And I think there is one still available who is highly touted. And that, of course, is Bonucci. I know he's getting up there in age, but Bonucci is essentially the center back that Jose Mourinho wishes Lindelof was. When we first heard about Lindelof, his strength was that his ability and to be calm on the ball and to play it out of the back. And that is what Bonucci is excellent at. He's one of the best passing center backs in the world. He's kind of more that clean sheet defender that can organize while Bai is the guy, kind of the destroyer uh, in front of him. So I think with Manchester United's two picks, especially uh, picking second to last in both rounds, they were able to get tremendous talent um, in areas of need. And with that, Manchester City is now on the clock for the final pick of the 2018 fantasy draft. In the first round, Man City went ahead and shirred up their only problem position that was left back by picking up a former Pep Guardiola and former Barcelona player in uh, Jordi Alba. And with that, there it's done. There's I've created the perfect team. There's no weaknesses. 
So I thought to myself, if th this is just like your final pick and you're already super loaded, just take a shot at whoever you think is going to be the next truly transcendent player. And to play to Pep Guardiola's strengths, what is he really good at? He's good at identifying talent and developing young talent into superstars. So I think with the final pick overall, I flirted with him taking Osman Dembele, but I went with the Spanish connection with Pep Guardiola and this man over here, and that is Marco Asensio of Real Madrid. I don't think he starts ahead of Leroy Sané, but I think he's an impact player who can come in on that left side, the right side, can also play a little bit of the camp position. You know, um, Silva's getting up there in age. He's a guy that could play decent minutes while still be developed developed underneath Pep Guardiola. And with that pick, that is going to close out the 2018 fantasy draft for the Premier League. Took a really long time. Who do you think had the best two overall picks? Go ahead and vote up in the I think is right now. But what we're going to do is we're going to take these rosters right here. We're going to plug them into the Premier League. And we're going to sim all the way to the end of the season and see if it actually affects anything. Will it change who gets relegated? Will it change who wins the league? There are a lot of intriguing questions to ask. And usually, if you've watched these before, I have to go ahead and make a wager. And there are like a myriad of things that I, I could wager on this, but... A, I went out on a limb to do that, those, those kind of quirky Arsenal picks. So I think I should be tied into this draft with Arsenal. So with that said, I say that Arsenal make it back into the top four. Is, is that too weak? Is that too easy to add? Here, I say Arsenal have to make top three or higher. If Arsenal do not make top three or higher, then I lose the forfeit. And for this forfeit, I'll go ahead and give $20 either in V-Bucks or FIFA points. But I guess we'll see at the end of the season. Take it away, Time Wizard. Go Time Wizard! All right, we said on June 1st of 2018, let's go ahead and take a look at the player stats of the season and see how the new boys did. See if any of the drafted guys did pretty well. Top score of the league is, no, it's still gonna be Mohamed Salah of Liverpool. Although Coutinho, excellent Liverpool player, came in in second place. Uh, Watford apparently did pretty well because De La Feo and Suarez are pretty high up there. Anthony Martial also doing pretty well. Is there anyone else in here to really make a name for himself? Messi all the way down in 15th place, interesting. All right, let's go over to assists and De La Feo, apparently man of the season over here. And is there anyone else in here? Cavani did pretty nicely. Cruz did not all too bad. And that is pretty much it. Coutinho in 15th place. And let's go over to clean sheets. And it's Gomez. Did Watford win the league? What the hell happened? <laughs> With David De Gea tying him uh, for the golden glove over here. Buffon also did well. A lot of the new keepers did well. Hanjanovic did well. Oblak did pretty well. Uh, Neuer, Neuer did okay, but it's, it's Huddersfield, so, you know, how good are you really going to do? And let's go ahead and look at it. I don't think Arsenal did that well, did they? <laughs> let's check it. Manchester United have gone ahead and won the league, although it's a very competitive league. 73 points is what took to it. While Watford uh, leapfrogged a whole bunch of people and went all the way up to second place, only three points away from winning the league. Liverpool also did pretty well with Chelsea doing uh, quite well. Uh, my, my gamble with Arsenal did not work out. Not only did they not make top three, they didn't even make top six. And oh my god, Stoke City went from relegation fodder, but with the power of Lionel Messi and Kylian Mbappe, jumped all the way up to fifth. That is insane. Let's take a look at the people that went ahead and are getting relegated. As I predicted, it was probably going to be the Huddersfield, the Brightons, the Bournemouths of the world. Although West Brom, I thought, would do better. They have Cristiano Ronaldo and James Rodriguez on that team, and they still couldn't get out of the relegation zone. That is super sad. Other big surprises, Man City falling from winning the league and the addition of Jordi Alba all the way to 8th place underneath Arsenal. That is very strange. And yeah, Cristiano Ronaldo only appeared in 25 games and he scored one goal and one assist. <laughs> so everyone who originally flamed me for choosing Lionel Messi over Cristiano Ronaldo, apologize. Apologize, goddammit, in the comment section right now for all the mean things you said to me. My feelings. But yeah, I got my Arsenal prediction very, very wrong. So uh, you can make fun of me for, for that one. Uh, but if you want to be qualified to go ahead and win the $20 of V-Bucks or $20 worth of uh, FIFA points, go ahead and at me, at Bimonis, uh on the Twitters and tweet me a picture of who would you take first overall if there was a Premier League fantasy draft. And trust me guys, when I do a giveaway on Twitter, like only like five people actually at me, so your chances are very high.
But yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Be honest, if you want to check out my other series, this is the ultimate randomizer career mode with Manchester United. And as well as you can go ahead and check down here, this is the previous draft video where we do it with only players that are under the age of 23. So yeah, that is it for me. Remember, stay yourself, stay humble, and until next time, stay chubby.